Hello everybody, it's SCD Medhaven here today, and we're going to be playing a couple of tanks, uh, nothing really crazy, mute, and we're back, sorry, I wanted to mess around, I'm uh, just a goofball, um, first things first, trade-in is going on, uh, they're going to be bringing in the trade-in, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but I am actually a little bit excited about this one, because I have something that I want to share, and that thing is, is that this trade-in includes the AE Phase 1, which I actually have over in Discord on a completely separate page. Um, I got Discord up so I can actually see this here, and then I have the um, trade-in down here so we don't have to actually go down and be like, <gasps> giant list, expand all, you know, just um, trade-in list, tanks that you can trade in for 50% of the gold value. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of recommending trade-ins, but currently there are two tanks that they have given away um, well, technically given away that are really, really bad. And actually, you know what, we're going to pause this and then uh, we will resume once I find out where I placed everything. Okay, and we're back. So starting off, the Legion 59 Patton, I, I don't recommend this tank along with the regular 59 Patton. So the Legion, I think this is with the Urn and then the 59 Patton. Best way to check that out would actually be over on the game real fast. So yes, the base variant is inside the Season Pass, and then the Legion came from the Urn inside of the uh, More Challenges tab here. Okay, I guess currently I do not have it earned. But back to this. Starting off, the you know, you're going to get half the value of 7200, you're going to get half the value of 9800 inside this. Honestly, if you guys get the Legion early... I would say use this for the trade-in because honestly, the reason why I don't recommend this is because the silver urn is only 100%. It is basically just a regular tech tree variant for silver urn, except for the actual 59 Patton, which rather than a, what is it? The crew experience is 20% and then uh, XP urn. There is no premium bonus on this. It doesn't have an increase to it on the uh, Legion, which is a bit confusing and why it doesn't, but it is what it is. The 59 pattern would be a keeper because you do have that 50% earned bonus. So if you guys had the Legion, uh, trade this in. Specifically, try and trade in for the AE Phase 1. Or you can go after the um, uh, Pesante C45s inside there. Do not trade in for that thing. You will hate it so much. Um, the Progetto 46, I believe. No, the Progetto 46 is actually on the Brain Fartery. Actually, it's way far down this list. It's actually a part of the personal offers, and then Deal of the Week is a 1.5 multiplier for silver. Uh, there's a couple of things going on. But uh, I just lost it all. Actually, after looking over it, if you have the Legion, a tank I would recommend to try and get your hands on would be the Dragon. Not the Dragon, but the Lance and Sea variant. That actually has better concealment than the Dragon. Uh, to give you guys an idea, we'll pull up the actual Dragon. Lance and C, we got 328 still concealment. Uh, Dragon, 335. There is a little bit of an advantage on the Lance and C over the Dragon, not to mention the premium penetration at 242. You get a little bit more penetration. Well, this only gets 236. Sure, you get 210 Hesh pin that does 480 alpha, but that little bit of extra concealment allows you to get a lot more assist to actually have a benefit using your silver. Uh, other than that, I don't really know what else to cover, except for I opened up a crap ton. Uh, which dream machine will you claim? Choose from the uh, outstanding tanks as a uh, as well as boosters. Boosters actually might be really cool. Premium time and other rewards. You decide how victory looks. Okay, uh, so I'm actually going to go ahead and pause this, then do a brief go over with you guys. Okay, after briefly going over this, taking a look at it, I can tell you guys now... The rewards inside this are a bit lackluster for what it is. Um, but for top earners on team, so first place, you're going to get five points for placing as the top XP earner on your team. Earn three points for placing second, third, um, top XP earner on your team. This is kind of messed up. Five points for taking first place in your team. Thing is that there's some plays that have so much value that even being the top XP earner is not it's it's uh, this is a ridiculous format to do this in but it is what it is and then earn one point one point um for placing as the fourth or fifth top xp earner on your team okay that's i, I guess so then anyone past you know if you're not in the top five you're not earning points i i'm sorry there should be like for playing a single match you should get one point and then for placing in fourth or fifth you should get like two points and then make this one like 
four points or three points and then make the top earner only get four points. That way it's participation reward as well because this is just, I'm sorry, this is my opinion. I think this is a bit wrong, but it is what it is. Keep racking up points until you've earned enough to claim a reward. Then head to the challenge tab, select a reward from the uh, possible drops. That's it. And even better, um, you're not limited to one reward. As long as the challenge is live, you can keep earning points and claiming as many rewards as you have points. Uh, you can also claim non-tank rewards multiple times. The sky is the limit. Well, we're going to have to test the sky is the limit part, aren't we? I'm gonna have some fun with that. Um, please note, if you're already on the um, yeah, if you're already on the vehicle, you're gonna get the silver reward for it um, in its place for compensation for it. Super Hellcat, 2.2 million, a mil 1951, uh, 4.1 million, uh, some Cold War tank I don't care about. Object 752. So out of this entire list, the only one that actually stands out to me is the Emil 1951, and even the Emil. 1951, I find this tank to be a bit lackluster compared to the Barracuda variant that actually has spaced armor on the top plate that actually has better armor than the Emil 1951 because of the spaced armor protection on the upper plate. You can actually over pull against some tier 10s and if they're not thinking firing nothing but heat, primarily they're going to tear through your turret like it's paper because 340 heat pen and your 180 millimeters of turret armor, I believe. Ah, yes, 12 degrees of gun depression. This is against 340 heat pin. You're looking at 331 millimeters effective. It will be torn through. However, against tier 8s, and this is compared against tier 8 270 heat pin round, Passante C45. And uh, yeah, you're going to be seeing some pretty good armor. As long as you're top tier, this tank will be performing nice. Uh, but yeah, this is actually be the one I'd recommend. Not just that, your lower armor underneath is 40 millimeters. That's really nice to see. It's going to prevent a lot of overmatching from underneath, uh, unless you're versing a 122. So yeah, that's the email 1951. This is the one that I'd recommend to get your hands on, unless you don't have the Super Cat. Um, my opinion on the 752, it, it's an okay tier 9, but it's just one that I don't find to be competitive or worth a pickup all entirely, because you're doing this to make silver. Making silver is top priority. Money is money. And now that we're coming back, the goal. So earn points by placing a top five. I love how they repeat this entirely right here. Um, so additional rewards, you're looking at a drop alpha. It costs 15 points. Two vehicle XP boosters, they're two times. Uh, drop four bravo. Two times vehicle XP booster one. Isn't that just the same? Oh, plus a three times. Okay, so you get both of these inside there. That's not bad if you want to stack up on them. And then delta drop, 125 points. Hold on. So... For 25 matches, you're going to have to place as the top earner, number one overall. 25 matches. Just to be able to afford the Delta drop. My opinion, that's kind of dumb, but I guess it is what it is. Maybe this isn't worth saving up for. You'd actually be better off saving up to get your hands on this. Because in all honesty, four times commander experience bonus, you get five of them. And then that's, so that's five matches where you need the place as a top earner. Then for every single five matches, why not just give us the ability that after five matches, we can purchase one of these for 25 points instead. Make it to where we can purchase them singly. That would be so much better. But instead, no, it's a bundle. All right. I guess they're just wanting us to grind hardcore. Uh, three days of premium time, 250. We can say that's 50 matches just to be able to get three days of premium i mean if you're investing 50 matches in the course of two days three days uh this would be beneficial to get your hands on but unless you're doing that i mean unless you're placing number one in the team every single time i don't see a point along with that saving up and getting your hands on the um a male 1951 would be so much better in all honesty oh wow stop jumping the um, the Soviet Tier 9 Object 752 Heavy Tank, 8 degrees of gun depression, decently thick turret. We're looking like 300 millimeter turret. It's a strong turret, but the fact that it's an autoloader, it kind of plays against it. You'll find it struggling a tad bit. Along with that, Swamp's back. Uh, also, new contract coming up. The Long Bomb. More than likely, I'll take time to try and earn the Long Bomb. So, yeah, that's going to be about it. Uh, other than that, let's go ahead and dive into some gameplay. Actually, before we even start talking about gameplay, in the trade-in this upcoming week, the Eradicator is in rotation. I highly recommend that if you guys can, try to get your hands on this. It is an amazing crew trainer. XP bonus of extra 75% plus a silver bonus. And I mean, you got 280 alpha. What is it not like about this? Three-shot autoloader. I would love to see it get a single shot. 
but it is what it is with the um, the three shot. Totally fine. 220 standard pin, 252 premium pin. It's capable of handling everything. I load nothing but full gold in this because I use it primarily for crew training. But seeing that it's going to be a part of the uh, trade-in, I would recommend hands down try and get the Eradicator if possible. It is an amazing crew trainer. Got to put camo on the tank first. Always got to go with the Kiwi. It's a battle Kiwi. We're also going to be going with the Bear Crew, the Wachek. The Wad Tech. There, it's also coming up in the trade in. If you guys didn't know this, um, personally, I want you guys to hear the audio with this crew inside of an auto loader. I think it's hilarious, and it perfectly fits the tank. So, I mean, it. What's the best thing? We're just gonna do it. All right. So we're on Lakeville. Honestly, Lakeville is gonna be awesome. I actually completely forgot the gun depression on this tank, and I cannot remember it for the life of me. Uh, Tankopedia, we're going to be going to, not Poland, we're not pulling that again, uh, Italy, yes, Italy, 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 uh, we have nine degrees of gun depression, all right, we're going to definitely be taking the right side, not bad, middle of the pack, rar, <laughs> the best part is with the interclip reload, he screams at us every single time throughout every single shell, every single time he loads. He just rars. I love it. it. It's something so simple. And then also with the 3D commander variant of him, he's holding that big all shell, so he's actually inside of my um 60 TP. Because it just it felt right to throw him inside the 60 TP. All right, TNH-105, Freedom, WZ-111-4, that's going to be scary if he's fully upgraded. Five degrees of gun depression, though, I don't feel too bad. Here it comes. Nice. Can't deny it, it's amazing. All right, let's see, oh, he popped a repair kit. Sad face. What do we got in the back there, IKV? Okay. I actually just want to take a little bit of take a little bit of time here. No point in pushing. I want to be careful with the turret armor. It's not exactly the strongest of the heavies, but it's a decent heavy nonetheless. Seriously though, that bear crew. And for you trying to punish us, we're just gonna we're gonna dirt a shell. Alright, let's go ahead and start in that uh premium consumable reload bonus here. Get that extra 15% active. Honestly, this is a... I love the Progetto 54. This has got to be one of my favorite tier rights. I wouldn't say that it's like a hands-down, you know, top-tier tank, but with its burst potential that it has and everything else that it offers, the thing is extremely nice to have. I would like to finish off that Freedom. You know what? I, I don't think that's a bad decision. Finishing off the Freedom. Maybe not. We'll load in one shell. Finish them off. Don't want to fire at that last one. The last one kills your reload badly. It's like a 13 second reload for 320 alpha. Teenage 105 is not fully upgraded. Hopefully the team here is playing a little nice. You guys have probably seen me take this position a lot in videos because it's, it's that strong. We're going to do a double. Maybe not. We're actually going to hold. 9.5 second reload with 320 alpha is a lot better than a 10 second reload. So we're just going to do this. Can't seem to find the gun depression on that TNH. Actually, can't remember off the top of my head. Can we pin that? No, we cannot. I was testing the waters. It's 10 to 14. Hmm. Yep, using your maximum gun depression, you want to be a little bit careful this turret because it's the way it's designed. It performs good with gun depression, but it also plays against it if you overpull. It's one of those tanks you got to be really careful in, but the thing is, it's like you have to overpull on some people just to be able to get shots. Should be able to go through his top. There we go. Starting to run low on standard rounds. Let's go ahead and pop that premium consumable one more time, see if we can get that view range down. Is he shooting from up top? Oh my goodness. 
Watching a couple of the blind shots come from that area. It is 8 to 13 right now. Really haul down fight. I'm liking it. You want to pull in bait just a little bit. Use what armor you do have to try and get some baits in the... Uh, that way, get people to waste ammo. Kind of offset reloads a little bit. Don't find it to be a bad thing to do that. Shaska. We're down to three shells left. And uh, left side's kind of falling apart a little bit. T29. I'll find Tiger 705A, Tiger 2. We got a bar. And an AMX AC48. Tiger 2, if you're going to be pushing, please be careful. And mindful of your surroundings. I don't want to over pull right now because uh, 875 hit points. Technically, two shot to the WZ1-4 if he's fully upgraded. Being a little bit of careful. Kind of hoping that the bar in the back of the map is in a decent position where it's hard to pin him. But thing is, if I fire, we're going to be firing everything because uh, we're going to be not using standards. We're going to be loading in the premium now because it's all we have left, along with three high explosives. So far, not a bad lineup. But I think... Oh, if I leave, these guys are just going to drop like flies, but it's got to happen. The bar, we'll see how well he can handle this. Tiger 2 is falling back as well. I'm probably going to drop back with him. 6 to 12, not exactly a great lineup on the uh, match right now, but it is what it is. Bar, 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 no, okay. Alpine Tiger behind us just got dropped. Let's see if we can make a cross here. It's a T-54, and that's a Conqueror. We're going to pop the repair kit. Oh, that's an uncomfortable pull. Light tank's going to pull around front, but we're going to go ahead and pull up on the side here. Let's see what we can do. I am willing to expend two shells at a time, but three is a no-go, because three is just how you find yourself constantly in a pinch and unable to do anything because you're just always stuck in a reload. Actually, we're going to keep utilizing our DPM. We're just going to go ahead and load in that final shell again. Maybe go for a kill. Maybe not. We got five seconds. Sadly, we missed that one, but we got a lot of... He's going to be two shots. It's not going to matter, though. I don't find ourselves uh, being able to do a whole lot. Bershing. Wow, a lot of low health tanks. Absolute ungodly amount of low health. Well, let's see if people start pulling us on us like there's no tomorrow. It's like Conqueror, still 1700. Oh, T95. Oh! You know what? That's completely fine for me. <laughs> I am totally okay with it. I don't know about you guys, but we got to hear that bear go off like no tomorrow. 5,038 damage, 389 assisted, 1,420 blocked. Plus, we have one detection, three kills. A little bit sad, but, you know, team kind of fell apart on the left side, and then uh, everyone on the right side was pulling up a little bit too much and risking a lot of their hit points. But it is what it is. You know, that's kind of how it goes. Okay, and up next in the list is going to be the Skoda T-56. I find this to be a tank that I would actually recommend to get your hands on, not because, you know, it's your decent heavy, because it's actually one of the strongest heavies in the game. So, for instance, a lot of our 440 Alpha tanks, they're going to take a little bit to reload. To give you guys an idea here, 10.67 seconds with a 460 Alpha. 248 premium pin, it is an AP round, by the way, not APCR. Don't let the game lie to you. It is mislabeled in the game. It's an AP round, which means it readjusts by 5 degrees. It's also a 130 millimeter, which means you have a lot of overmatch potential. And we're going to be comparing this to one other tank. 
This is the 50TP, um, the 50TP prototype to be exact. 11.45-second uh, reload with a 440 alpha. You guys see where I'm going with this? The Skoda T56 has 20 more alpha and almost an entire second advantage on the reload. Other than that, let's go ahead and jump into a match. Oh, that also reminds me. This upcoming match, I'm probably not going to be top tier. I might be against tier 10s or tier 9s, but it, it is what it is. I guess we're going to have to see what I can do. And we're up against tier 9, so not exactly bad. It's going to be better, that is for sure. Ooh, unupgraded uh, Progetto 66. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's going to be fun. I mean, actually, I, I'm a little bit sad that they took away the four-shot autoloader from that tank, because that four-shot was actually competitive if you used it correctly. And so much fun. All right, 35 top speed, decent power to weight. It's not exactly the most, the fastest tank on the field, but its gun is just absolutely scary. 208 standard pin, 248 premium pin. It's not APC or it's AP. Uh, your high explosives, on the other hand, they're pretty decent. I actually forgot the alpha on them, but I'm not even going to look it up. I don't see a point in looking it up uh, because no point. <laughs> but yeah, um, another thing is I've actually been talking to a couple of people. And um, one thing I've mentioned to them is you're talking about daily doubles. All right, this is something like discussing daily doubles. Daily doubles is something that you can do on tanks where it's the first match of the day is going to be a two times multiplier or sometimes a five times multiplier. My question for you is, is it worth it? Whenever you can play one of your best tanks that you have and you can consistently make double the experience because you're performing better inside of that tank to begin with, or would you rather have a thousand damage game inside of a t daily double or sometimes even zero damage with a little bit of assist with a daily double. In my opinion, I would rather play a tank that I'm actually going to be scoring consistently well with for my daily doubles. Just, like, not even worrying about the daily double. Just pretend like the daily double doesn't even exist. Play your best tanks, play them to the best of your ability, and rock them to the best you, you can. We're going to overmatch his under armor there because he has it exposed, because he's not covering it. Um, honestly, the TNH, uh, the VZs, uh, I don't recommend trying to go haul down with them unless they're truly haul down with the turret covered because you can essentially tear through the under armor on those. And even with the E75, it's got one of the same weak spots. So we're just going to pull on him again. We're going to aim up low and take him down for the count. There we go. If he doesn't know about that, you do now. We're using standard rounds as well, and he's probably wondering how we killed him. Completely fine, though. Don't want to pull in the KV-4 because we're going to have to load premium to be able to go through him. However, the Legion that has a giant tumor. I forgot that they buffed the tumor. I still thought we are going to be hitting like 160 millimeters of armor. No, it's like one... Uh, it's like 165. They did bump it. I do believe that is the standard. There we go. Good tank down. We're going to go and back off. Start loading in the premium round because I don't want to put up with the IS-4 over here. And we'll swap back in the standards once the IS-4 and Legion are out of the equation. 484. Decent little high roll there. Honestly, really good haul down fighter too. The way that the armor on the uh, Skoda T-56 is designed, you want to play haul down. It's all about trying to bolster as much as you can and getting your armor up as much as you can to actually make that frontal plate effective. And watch out because if, you know, you get hit in the right spot on the turret, they're essentially just going to tear through it. Because it's it's thick enough to handle standards, but thin enough to be pinned with premium. So keep that in mind whenever you're actually playing this tank, if you plan on getting it. Nameless, he's going to be running out, but we're not going to pull on him because there's no point in pulling. I'm going to put a 465 into the lovely Legion that he should trade in for this tank on Tuesday. E75 down low. I'm going to go ahead and relocate here. I do believe the top armor on the E75 is weak enough. And uh, me being me, I pulled a full Muppet move and just risked an absolute crazy amount of hit points for no reason whatsoever. And uh, he's not upgraded, so we're going to put a big boy shell into him. going to try and get a decent angle here on that Agel. 
Let's hope that the E75 loaded with the 105. The, the reload on that's actually really quick. Yeah, not bad. 3,897, 1,096 assisted. Decent. And against tier 9s nonetheless. Oh, not to mention the 4,310 blocked. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think the last match might be a win. I left, but it was 8 to 7 by the time I left. There's another thing coming up. The daily doubles. I'm sorry I'm bringing this up again, but I'm going to. If you play, let's say, for instance, that I want to play my TVP uh, VTU because I have my daily double that I can earn off of it. What is the benefit if I play this tank and only do, let's say, a thousand damage? But then I go ahead and I say, you know what, let's actually play my 50 TP. And inside my 50 TP, which I have three marked, I know how to play this tank. I enjoy this tank. And I, I do, let's say, 3,000 damage. Okay? The experience I'm going to get off the 50 TP is going to be so much more than the daily double for only doing 1,000. Because if you go up against tier 10s, you get a big gun, you can overmatch. My suggestion to you is... If you are grinding a contract for a mercenary tank or you're doing a challenge that requires XP, play the tanks you know, play the tanks you're comfortable with. Daily doubles, they only have value on tanks that you are currently grinding for the first match that you play whenever you're grinding them. Other than that, I don't recommend trying to rely on daily doubles to complete challenges. Play the best tanks that you have. That's my recommendation. Also, up next, guys, seriously, leave a like on this. Popularity algorithm hit it i'll show some freaking thigh if i got to come on just kidding i might show some thigh though i'm a guy though it's, it's a bit hairy but well, i'll consider it okay other than that you guys have a great day afternoon night whatever time you're catching this uh more than likely it will be releasing right at like three o'clock if it's not fully uploaded by then maybe 3 30 you know 30 minutes after the update starts but there's not a whole lot to cover this week. I don't know if there's a new tier 8 premium coming out, but I kind of wanted to cover a couple of things and give you guys ideas on what you should actually use your trade-ins for to be effective. There's also a deal of the week, which is a 1.5 um, silver. That's coming in a stack of 20 of them. Um, depending on the price of that, if it's above 1,000 gold, I would not recommend it. If it's above 1,000 for it, ignore it pretend like it doesn't exist you're just better off playing tier 8 premiums um other than that stacking up in boosters is a good thing for crying a lot i have 2,503 times i have 1,244 two times i got 55 times i got seven four times commander experience bonuses i got quite a few of these uh along with that here's my silver for anyone that cares how many boosters i have um i don't use them a whole lot i only use them during the on track events and um double silver events, so silver increase events, or after I complete a season pass and get that 25% extra silver, then I start to use these a little bit on tanks that I feel comfortable in to make the most silver that I possibly can. So other than that, there's some of my recommendations for you guys. Hopefully this has uh, been informational for you. And uh, was that a win? Oh, come on, spot six enemies. You're going to go away? Oh my gosh. It was a win. Okay, you guys, I'm out of here. Have fun. Thanks for watching. Leave a like. Seriously, helps out the channel a crap ton. Algorithm-wise, it just boosts the popularity. It just makes us be seen by a lot more people. Come on, help me with my clickbait here.